sign-up sheet. Okay, we're recording. Uh, welcome to the Banner Bunch. Uh, this will actually be our last Banner Bunch of the year. Uh, we found that in July and August, not a lot of people come to these because there's not a lot of people on campus. Uh, so the next one will be next fall uh, in September, probably in service or around that time. Uh, this will be the last one this year. We've got a pretty cool topic this time. So standard format, we'll do introductions of our team. Uh, and then we'll be talking about Banner 9 today. Uh, I'll try to give you guys as much information as I can right now and let you know where we're going with that. Uh, and then if we have any time, uh, we'll have an open forum at the end. I may go a little bit longer than usual this time or maybe a lot of questions, so we'll see. So we have a new addition to the Banner Bunch. Uh, Dwayne Jenks is our new programmer. Uh, Dwayne's an LBCC grad. He's got two degrees from here, uh, which is a common thread on this team. Uh, and we got him from Polycom. So this is his fourth day here, so be kind of him. <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> we also have Mark, Tyler, uh, Teresa, Lori, Carl. Uh, we still have Lena for two more days. Uh, she's going to Oregon Coast Community College next week. Catherine Williams, uh, myself, I'm Gabriel, and Michael Quiner. So Banner 9, who here knows everything they need to know about Banner 9? <laughs> <laughs> that is what? what's going to be so much better. <laughs> oh, I uh, all you need to know. Who here has even seen it, or you just maybe you've just heard about it from us. Right now we're on Banner 8 and uh, we're up to speed with Banner 8. We've actually caught up with all the updates. We're keeping ourselves up to date. We haven't heard on anything with Banner 9. Uh, partly because not everything was available to us in the past and partly because uh, it wasn't ready uh, on the infrastructure and the things. Uh, but we're getting there. Banner 9 uh, has been in development for a long time for Lucian. In fact, I think Back when it was SunGuard is when they started making moves to Banner 9 or making plans or starting development. It's been like six or seven years and it's gone through a bit of a history. In fact, they rebranded it one time. They called it Banner XD for a while. Uh, now they've gone back to calling it Banner 9 and hopefully it stays there. Uh, but the features have come a long ways and they've got a good vision for this. The, the big things that it delivers is a modern interface. And Banner 8 has gotten stale while they've been building this. In fact, it's probably stale when it first came out. Uh, this interface will look nice. This interface can be used in any browser. And it's not dependent on Java or Oracle Forms. Uh, it works on a computer or a tablet or a phone. It resizes the way that we expect technology to do nowadays. Uh, they've changed some of the navigation in IMB but they haven't changed a whole lot more than the look and feel. And then in self-service, they've added a ton of functionality. So I'm gonna go through IMB and then WebRunner and show screenshots. Uh, you have to give me a grain of salt on the, the Banner 9 screenshots. I got them from like sales materials and I borrowed them from, from a Lucian. And not all of them are perfect, not all of them will display on here real nice, but I'll walk us through kind of the core features I want you to see. Uh, and then at the very end of this, I'll, I'll give you a lot of information where you can learn anything and everything you want to know about Banner on, on your own. So IMB, the administrative pages of Banner, <laughs> um, that's, that's where we do most of our work. It's, it's the flip side from web runners. It's the ugly screens that uh, we've fought with issues with Java going away and having to get it working with Firefox again and that sort of thing. Uh, they're going to start calling them administrative pages because they're going to start looking a lot more like web runner to them. Uh, the, the Lucian's delivered all the transformations, what they call a transformation, so they've taken all the banner forms, and without changing the functionality, they've brought, rebuilt the user interface. They've built it into a web browser. Uh, so when you're used to going to Spaden and Sodom and Sagasta and Sparks, all those still exist. All the functionality still works. It'll still do the same processes, but it will look different. Uh, the, the analogy I like to use is it's a lot like when Microsoft Office went from 2003 to 2007. Uh, if everyone remembers that, some of us are too young. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, 
We went from the file edit to doing the top right or top left, and then they rebuilt the ribbon. And when the, all of us started using that functionality, it was a bit shocking. It was a bit of a change. But after you used it for about a week or so, there's no way you'd go back. You know, it was that it was a change that was done on purpose and it was done well. That's how I like to think of banner now. So let's look at some of these. And I'm going to start with probably the most shocking change of all, our homepage when you log in. So right now, this is Banner 8. This is actually our product screen from last night. Uh, you've got the go-to menu where you type in Spaden or Pupin or Safari or whatnot. Uh, you've got some menus down below that I don't know if people use a whole lot, but they're available uh, to navigate through all the different forms. Uh, that's most of the functionality that's on here. It will change to something that looks more like this. <laughs> uh, obviously, we will brand this a little bit differently. We'll have Lindbergh Community College, maybe a nice picture of our campus or something like that. But the big thing that's changed here is they've modeled it to look a little bit like Google, right? That big search bar right in the middle is your go to button where you would type in Spaden or P Page or Safari. It still navigates the same way, but it looks a whole lot different. Uh, if you do use those menus, there's a menu button in the top left of the screen. Uh, it's a little hard to see on this screen because it's a little cramped, but that's, you would click on that and it would expand out your menu options and you could navigate that way. Uh, for those of us that like to go to file and go to the, the forms we've been to in the past, that's the third little icon up there. It looks like a little folder with a number up there. Those are all the forms that I've been to. Uh, and then our user information is up in the upper right for signing out. Uh, it actually behaves pretty much the same way. It just looks a whole lot different. Uh, and it's got a little bit extra functionality in it that I really like in that the search bar actually acts like a search bar you'd expect on the internet nowadays. As you start typing, it's got predictive text that will start populating options below it. So as you start typing spading, if you hit S, a bunch of S forms will show up below it. And as you continue typing, it will narrow down that list to what you're looking for. Uh, what's even more exciting about that is that Pelusian is moving away from speaking banner. Uh, Spadens, far eggs, and all those acronyms that we know and love can still exist, but you can also type in person and all the person forms will show up. You know, I think people that ne are coming new to Banner will never even use the acronyms. They'll just know that I want to go look up registration, so I'll start typing registration and what I'm looking for will show up in my results. Uh, another thing to see here is uh, it's really hard to see on this screen is the keyword shortcuts in the bottom right. You can click on that and see all your shortcuts, the hotkeys, uh, for those of us that, that use hotkeys. Uh, most of them will stay the same, but a couple will change because now we're inside a web browser and F5 in, an F in a browser means refresh, and they're not gonna be able to rewrite that sort of functionality. So a couple of them will change, but most of them will stay the same. But all of them are available right there. So a pretty big change on this screen. Uh, here's P. Payton. P. Payton's very similar to Spaden, uh, or I think F. P. I. Aiden. Uh, you put in your ID at the top, you next blocks down, and then you've got a bunch of tabs of information and blocks of information about who this person is. These screens have been changed so that all that functionality still exists, but it looks different. It looks a lot cleaner. Right? It it'll, it'll display nicely in a web browser, and as you shrink and expand or use a different sort of tablet, some of these features will uh, react to that accordingly. Uh, you still put in your ID at the top, you still come down, uh, all the tabs exist. There's a little bit more functionality along the blocks that are things that you might expect intuitively with the web. These carrots by the names, like the little down arrows, if you click on it, this will expand and contract. Uh, you can also, uh, all the icons across the top are gone in those. Those have been moved. Uh, options are in this. <clears throat> this is a list of related forms, so you'll be able to see that still. But most of them are underneath these settings or tools. Uh, a lot of those features we don't use a whole lot, or uh, the group moved in here. But you pop these down and the menu opens up and you have all your options available. Uh, for those of us that roll back a lot, there's now a start over button. That's the roll back or F10, or the, the save button is now down in the bottom right. So 
Let's look at a few other features. Here's a form uh, MBA PBUD. Similar, you've got key block information at the top, and then you've got your tabs and information. Uh, this one might be a little harder to see, but your key block is still at the top. You put all your information in and come into the, into the form, and then you have your tabs, you have your blocks of information. I wanted to show that this one was actually resized a little bit, so some of the words have appeared now next to the top right, so you can actually see what those are. I'm, just, I'm guessing the previous screenshot was off of like a tablet, and this one's off of a screen. There's also for forms that have lots of repeating information, there's down in the bottom left, you can actually next block over to the next record so you can see how many records there are and you can skip to the end. Uh, sort of things that we actually expect from a web page nowadays, but are, are new to Banner. This one I think is probably the most exciting one of the changes to, to the look and feel. This is a, the registration history form, so far here. And this form can get unwieldy really quick. I mean, you've got a lot of information on people that have been here a long time, and you've got to scroll up and down, and it's hard to keep track of things. What this will change to is something that looks more like a spreadsheet. Uh, and I've actually had to expand this off the screen just to be able to show it so you can see it in the back. But it'll look and act like a spreadsheet does nowadays. You can reorder the columns all you want, you can sort, you can filter. Uh, in that tools menu in the top right, there'll be the ability to export to Excel or CSV. Uh, it makes it a lot more usable when you've got a lot of information on the form. So I've kind of gone through a few examples and I'd like to take a minute and I can go back or we can ask questions about some of this. I'd like to pause for a minute I don't think I've hit on everything that's coming in Banner Night, but what I really want you to take away from this is that it looks different. But the functionality that we're familiar with is still there. Everything that you know right now still applies. And so picking this up real, should be really quick. Uh, what's going to be really cool is getting familiar with some of the newer features, like the ability to resort or export or, or how it really does work. Uh, does anybody have any questions on some of those before I dive into WebRunner? Can you tell them when you're expecting Banner Night? Oh, we'll get into that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's the one thing everyone's thinking. Can you actually fill out one of the forms for us and show us how to? I cannot yet. These are just screenshots from Pelusian documentation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get into that. So someday you will show us how to move around <laughs> in these forms. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so WebRutter, I get the sense that they're just rebuilding the whole thing from the ground a self-service banner and as they're doing that they're adding a lot of cool new functionality things that we we would expect that people would be able to do for their ourselves online um, these are most of the the areas that they're adding they're adding profile pages which they take a whole lot of information that's spread out across web or even banner condensing it into one page that makes a lot of sense for advisors the student profile is going to be huge is you'll be able to see pretty much at a glance everything about a student. Uh, there'll be the ability to add notes and that sort of thing. Uh, registration's gotten completely overhauled, and we'll look at that in a minute. Attendance tracking is a new feature that I think could be used if we use it on campus. It's really slick. Uh, the way grade entry is done has changed. Direct deposit, I'm really thrilled on. We actually have built our own direct deposit system. What they have built does everything ours does and more. So that's our baseline plan for that option. Is we're just gonna, when Banner 9 gets put in, we're gonna roll over to Banner 9 and, and obviously our old home growth system. Uh, there's an employee profile and then a few other things that uh, I don't uh, have a whole lot of information on, but I know that they're new, inf new uh, functionality. There's a new purchasing thing for finance that allows you to request purchases through WebRunner. Uh, and then there's event management, which may or may not make sense to compete with PMS on our campus. Uh, probably one of the biggest things that I think we could take advantage of is the communication management tool here. Banner 8 had comp plans and you could write letters or uh, do mail versions or send everything else, but they're all pretty clunky and hard to use and they never really look great. Communication management really levels up the ability to send out information from Banner automatically and directly to students. Uh, it's pretty slick. 
So I don't have one-to-one -one pictures of these because it doesn't even make sense anymore to show like the registration screen from our current web runner. But this is the new registration screens. And you notice there's a lot of information on the screen, but it's a lot more user-friendly than the old one. The old one had just put in, there's like five or six blocks, put in your CRM, figure it out. This one, you can actually search for your classes in, in several different ways. You'll notice that there's actually a button for plans. This will connect directly to DegreeWorks. And you'll be able to just, if you've already gone through the, the plan on what you're doing with your advisor or guided pathways, you just suck in your registration and hit go. Uh, down at the bottom right, you can see the status of everything, whether you're registered or waitlisted. You have options on what sort of actions you can do. You can get out and look at your tuition and fees directly. And then on the bottom left is a more visual representation. We actually have to pay for a third party right now, College Scheduler, to do that functionality around this. This may obsolete the need for that third party tool to save us some money. Um, this is our class roster. So we went from class information and grading a homegrown system to the faculty uh, self-service about a year and a half ago. This is gonna bring back some of the functionality that people lost when we did that. Uh, primarily the ability to export your roster out to a spreadsheet. That was one of the key features I heard from class information and grading that people missed when we moved to the baseline. Uh, the ability to export this whole list to a CSV has come back. This is now a baseline functionality. Uh, even though this is hard to read, one of the things that thrills me in this screenshot is everybody can see that orange button right there. That means that person's confidential. It stands out. You know, we can immediately see that that person's confidential and that we want to be careful how we communicate with them. Uh, you can reorder your columns, you can resort things, uh, you can email people more easily. I think that this is going to be a level up for what we're currently at with the current rosters. <laughs> This is a screenshot of your faculty grading screens. Uh, what I like in here is that you can actually see in the top all the classes that you have rather than having to go back and forth the menu. You can just click within this and get to your other classes and put in more grades. Uh, in the top left of this, it's kind of difficult to see in this screenshot, but these are progress bars. I can see how far I'm done grading this course. If I've only graded a couple of people, that progress bar will only have a little bit of information in it. Once I'm done, it'll fill up and be great. Uh, again, you can resort, you can uh, filter on this. On the right hand side, you have information about that course that you can collapse down so you have more real estate for the grading. Then uh, the top right is the most exciting feature that I like. You can import grades from Excel. So if you've done all of your grading in Excel, as long as the, the Excel spreadsheet's formatted right, you can just import that and it'll all go right in this banner. Uh, one of the key features they've built into this so that you format it correctly is you can export your grade roster or grade sheet and then fill in all the grades and then import it back in. So it gives a lot more flexibility on how faculty do grading. This is the attendance tracking screen. Uh, I think this is pretty user friendly. I'd love to see this on a phone at the front of a class and just go beep, 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 gives everybody a cheer. Uh, you can also see a little bit more functionality that you can have pictures for students. That's something we're interested in, having pictures of everybody, your ID pictures that we all have somewhere on a server. I'd love to get those in the banner and have those connected with your accounts. Uh, other things that are in the attendance tracking screen, you can see more analytics like the attendance rates for people. If you're using the attendance tracking and you're on top of it, you can see if somebody's been missing half the classes right at a glance. Uh, there's also the ability to track the amount of time that they attended if you want to go to that, that level of detail. I know that we have some of those requirements around grants and that sort of thing. You can track this person was here for 15 minutes and it will store that information in banner to a bit later. This one, I know the text is really small, but this is the direct deposit screen. Uh, I wanted to just show that you can add multiple accounts. You can divide up your deposits however you want by monetary amounts, by percentages, by whatever's left over. You can have as many accounts as you want. Uh, it's almost identical to what we've built here. Okay. Yeah. With the attendance tracking, is that tutor track or is this something um, different? Is this what they will be using for ABS? This is what we could use. I mean, right now we use tutor track and 
in the classrooms the students can scan in as, as we transition from check-in stations we're going to tutor track kiosks uh -huh. um, they can use that they can use Moodle as a tennis tracking unit this is going to be the web runner attendance tracking so we've actually got several different ways we can do attendance tracking on campus I don't know if there's a best way yet but they're all pretty new And then here's one of those profile pages. This is the employee profile. This takes pretty much everything in employee self-service and puts it on one page that's pretty easy to use. Right at a glance, I can see my vacation leave, my, my sick leave, right at the top there. I can see my pay information, my pay stubs, my benefits, my taxes. It's all on one page now, rather than having to go back and forth the menus and figure out where I'm at. So uh, this is a pretty exciting. Another thing in the bottom right is something that will hopefully eventually get you where you can enter your timesheets in WebRunner. Uh, web time entry is something we definitely would love to have. Uh, and there's probably things that may or may not make sense here because this is uh, the standard uh, Elucian delivery for pretty much everybody. Uh, but the student profile looks similar to this. You have a picture, you have all the information sucked into one place, uh, and you can look at it at a glance and just get a lot more out of WebRunner than you currently do. All right. Any questions back there on all that functionality? We can go back and look at those screens or poke at them a little bit. Uh, again, they're just screenshots, but I'm happy to answer any questions on Lipper. I think there's a lot of functionality that we're going to get that's new. Uh, and in theory, it's all pretty intuitive. There's going to be a, little, a lot less training in the self service end, even though there's a lot new. All right. So I grabbed this slide directly out of a Lucy uh, documentation as well. In their theory, this is how you roll out Banner 9 on a campus. Uh, I've deleted their time, the dates that they put on this. <laughs> completely unrealistic. Um, we're actually about a third of the way through this right now. So at the very beginning of this is getting our infrastructure in place. Mark's been working really hard on ESM and single sign-on for Banner. Uh, we've been working very hard on removing a lot of modifications, things will become roadblocks farther down this line. Uh, and then on our end, we've become a little bit more familiar with Banner 9. So where we're getting to is now into that blue middle area where we need to stand up a sandbox where people can start poking at it. Uh, start thinking through how are we going to roll this out because we don't have to roll it all out at once. We can do one piece at a time and have Banner 9 and Banner 8 standing side by side. Uh, there's a lot of planning that's going to happen over this summer. So that is our current goal right now, is just to get ESM, EIS wrapped up, get Banner 9 stood up in a sandbox, and then plan out how we're going to roll this out for reals. Uh, the big date that's actually real on this, that's a hard deadline, is that end time. We have to be on Banner 9 by December of 2018, which I think is pretty conservative right now. We've got about a year and a half. The reason for that is Elucian is going to stop supporting Banner 8 at the end of next year. Uh, not just because they want to, but because a lot of technologies are just disappearing. Oracle Forms are going to be de-supported. Java is already out of all the browsers. Uh, it's going to become more and more difficult as time goes on to keep Banner 8 up and running and alive. So getting to Banner 9 before then is a hard deadline. I think we're going to be on there before then. <coughs> My goal is over the next year. We'll start rolling out either all of them together or piece by piece. We want to figure that out over the summer. One thing I can say is that if we do do a piece by piece, the areas that have worked hardest on removing modifications and that new stuff from Banner are going to have the easiest transition. It'll be along the lines of when you want to go. Uh, areas that still have a lot of modifications or net new stuff, we're going to have to rebuild all that stuff from scratch. So moving those are going to take a lot longer. All right, so there's a ton of information out there that everybody has at their fingertips right now on Banner 9. And I'm starting to give the push for all of us to start to go out and learn, make a little bit of time and figure out what Banner 9 looks like and start developing questions on what is this going to mean to me. Out there on the Elucian Hub, we encourage all of you to go out to e-communities and all of that. On the Elucian Hub, there's a Banner 9 guide that you can request. And when you go into that, let me show you what it looks like. It's really cool. Let's see here. 
So everybody's familiar with the Elysian Hub? Is this new to anybody? I love the Elysian Hub. It is awesome. Out there, if you don't have this Banner Night Guide, you can request it from the apps. And in the Banner Night Guide, I've already got it up, it will tell you, some of it's a little more technical on how to get there. You know, check out your modifications, turn on single sign-on, get ready to go. What you're gonna wanna know is all this information. You can go look at all these available areas of functionality that call them apps and start getting information on webinars, watching videos of how this is used at other schools, watch the presentations from Elysian Live this year, the conference uh, that was in Orlando, uh, read the documentation. Everything that we know about Banner 9 is in here. And I encourage you guys to explore it as well. Right to the slide. Um, you mentioned the webinars that are out there. They record all their webinars, so if you miss a webinar, you can always go back and watch it. Uh, we're gonna start collaborating with a lot of our information that we learn onto the Bandox, so it's gonna be available there as well. But again, the Elysian Hub's really where we're getting all that information from. Uh, and most importantly, ask us. You know, if you're curious about Banner 9, shoot us an email or catch us in the hallway, come to Banner Bunches. We're more than happy to share information, and we're gonna try to communicate as much as possible as these start coming. Uh, especially when we start having deadlines on this is when student screens are going to change or this is when web render is going to change. We're going to have to communicate with everybody. Uh, I'm starting to brainstorm different ideas on ways we can do that. Uh, that'll start coming as summer moves on. Questions? I got through that pretty quick. Is, is there any, sorry, please in your voice. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you need from end users that would be helpful? I think probably the, where we'll lead from you is when we actually get a sandbox up and running uh, and you get your hands on it, we'll need your feedback. We we'll want to know what, what is easy, what is difficult, because we'll have to assess what do we need to invest more in training on or what is just intuitive and run with. Uh, we'll learn that as we go. One thing I've heard from other schools that have actually started making the leap to Banner 9 is that there's almost no training. Support calls just disappear because it is so intuitive, it's so easy to use that you just get in there and start running. Uh, students tend to love this in the fact once the students get their hands on web runner and it's changed, they'll start demanding things be changed. They'll start expecting why is it still ugly over here when it's pretty over here. Uh, it's true. That's that's the feedback we've heard from schools that have moved to Banner 9 and, and done the transition slowly is that pretty soon they can't move fast enough. Another question. Um, and excuse me, I've already been answered, but um, being you know, a question as always, but with the new web runner interface and then the changes uh, over to Banner 9, is that new interface going to happen only after everyone's off of the 8 and 9 you know, interchange, or is it going to work independently uh, with both versions? Uh, we have the ability to be kind of granular how we move it out, but we're going to figure out over the summer how, how we do that. Uh, Lucian built the functionality to be able to move that granularly because they didn't have everything built at first, but now that everything's been built, they're starting to encourage people to just make the leap and do the whole change at once. Yeah. Uh, it kind of depends. We're going to plan that out over the summer, and especially once we have our hands on it, we have an instance we can stand up and see what it looks like side by side or see what it's if it's difficult to maintain both of them side by side, that may it may uh, guide us a little bit. Uh, some of that might be you guys as well. Uh, maybe feedback, give us feedback that you know I love Banner Night here, but now that I've got to go back to Banner Eight, I'd rather just pull off the bandaid and make it all at once. Just dive in. Other questions? It doesn't have to be about Banner Nine. That's your guys' time. Want to I'd love to mention NWEUG. Does everybody know what that is, or has anybody heard of it? NWEUG, the acronym stands for Northwest Elusive Users Group. Uh, so in the banner world, there's there's conferences throughout the year. The big one is Elusive Live, that's East Coast, West Coast. It's a global conference. There's 9,000 people who go to that. I encourage you to go to that, but it's expensive. Uh, NWEUG is a regional version of that. It's much smaller. Only a couple hundred people show up to those. The registration is 100 bucks. Uh, we, Lynn Benton Community College, are hosting it this year. 
So uh, what is the dates? August August seventh and eighth. August seventh and eighth. They will be here on this campus. Uh, currently, we're requesting proposals to fill in session, but there's already about 40 or 50 of them. Uh, we're trying to get as many people to register for that as possible. I know a lot of people are coming from Oregon State and from Washington and Idaho. Uh, it's going to be really neat. Last year, it was up the Pacific, and we really enjoyed it. Uh, and so we're looking forward to it on this campus. I highly recommend everybody go to that. I'll be presenting on the baseline project. You know, HR will be presenting on uh, the part-time faculty system that they've built and that we're going to transition into the line. Will Elysian be there? Is Elysian will be there and they're presenting about... Elysian has about uh, 13 sessions yeah. that they're presenting. They'll be presenting and, as well. And they'll have a, a ton of people here, including their um, senior vice president in charge of technology. Right, John Kopke will be here. Will be here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of their vendors will be here as well. <laughs> Lori's gonna Lori. have the hug. <laughs> <laughs> I love hugs. I had heard. <laughs> it's a revenue generator. <laughs> uh, do, do we pay Lori for a hug? Is that, is that like a fun oh, Not okay. enough money. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition, in addition to Lucian, uh, a lot of their vendors, their partners, will be here as well. So we're working on getting runner technology here in Divisions and. CashNet and all the other companies, the third party companies that work with Lucian, they'll have a presence as well. Questions? Uh, making an assumption that with Banner 9, you'll, um, what you can, what screens you can get in and what I'm authorized to work mm -hmm. in and see will be the same. Your access will stay the Except, same. Mm -hmm. And will Banner 9 delete the um, Santa Q form? <laughs> Um, a new employee, is it still going to be the same banner queue form that was sent to Lori? To the access to, form? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that'll all stay the same. No, so the changes. form's not going paperless? Not yet. We <laughs> probably move that to laser page at some point. Yeah. So that'll all stay the same. The access will stay the same. Uh, some of the features might highlight fine grain access a little bit more. I think there's one screenshot back here. We go way back. Let's see. I think on this one you can notice that some of these fields are, are dark and then some of them are grayed out a little bit, but you can still see the information in them. That's because you have access to change these ones, but these ones you just have query access to. So there's there's some granularity of control that we currently have, but it's much more better displayed in Banner 9. Other questions? Everyone's excited about Banner 9. Oh, yes. Yeah, does it, is, is the feedback good? A thumbs up, thumbs down, it looks good? It looks good. <laughs> a lot of thumbs up. Uh, like we've done on a couple of projects now, is we're going to try to manage change as much as possible. That's my number one focus, is making sure that nothing is a surprise. You know, we don't pull the rug out from anybody, and everybody, if they need training, gets the training they need. Uh, we're going to have to communicate a little bit more broadly than folks in this room this time. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to communicate with faculty a lot more on this change. We're going to have to communicate with our students at a level that we haven't done in the past. So it's going to be a, a bigger challenge for us communication-wise, but I'm pretty confident we can hit that, uh, especially since we were mindful of it ahead of time. Um, we're also watching other institutions in the neighborhood because every banner institution in the world is making this leap right now. Uh, Oregon State's making it. I think Lane Community College is a little ahead of us. Chemeca does alongside us. COCC is doing the same thing. Um, there's 2,400 manor schools in the world doing this right now. So there's a lot of support out there in the community as well. Do you have any of the Banner 9 um, screenshots for like creating courses instead of SSA, SECT, and Banner 8? You know, I don't know if I have a very specific shot of that. I can look for one or I can request one from the Lucian. That would be cool. But it's still going to be SOS Act yeah. or Scott Corsi, depending on where you're doing your work. And it's still going to be the same information, close to the same layout, but it's going to have that same have sort of, this same kind of the nicer look. look to it and the ability to collapse and, okay. and uh, filter and that sort of thing. 
there is like, like I, I mean, I'm really excited about Banner 9. Um, and, and Dave did say you won't need much training, but there will be some questions. And mm -hmm. like you buy a new car, you already know how to drive, but you still want to know where's the spare tire and how do I adjust right. my seat and uh, where's the hood release? Because they might be in different places, and that and that's going to be exactly the same thing. So we're gonna we're gonna have to sit with you and say, so looking at this, do you think you can do everything you want to do? And if not, then let's figure out how right. that will now work. I want to have a really good answer for everyone. Yeah, that's I got to top the screen. How do I do? If I press this button in Vanage, where do I do that in Vanage? Right. That's one of my key goals. Making sure that that's if a hockey has changed, what does it change to? And there sure will be a couple right. of those. But your your job and the knowledge you have and how to do it won't change. You still know how to drive. It's just maybe how to adjust the mirrors. Yep. That's a great analogy. Why, thank you. <laughs> Not only that, <laughs> also under the hood, it's a lot like going from a gasoline car to a Tesla. Mm -hmm. Is there an incentive? Battery is the old diesel engine. And Banner 9 is, is the Tesla, the new hotness electric engine, less than 100 mm -hmm. points. And a very, very quick. quick. I think we should go with this whole analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. I like it. It works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> you have a big problem like updating Java on your computer so you can write Oracle Forms. Yeah. That goes away. Yeah. Because Oracle Forms is going to go. Oracle is going to be support Oracle Forms uh, sometime in the next the twelve the next years. Year. Yeah. So we want them to use it, which is why they're pushing us to go with Banner Nine. Banner Nine is not reliant on uh, the Java runtime environment anymore. It's actually going to be running in your web browser, like it used to be. But it's not a plugin. It's actually using the web technologies built into your web browser to give you all that. Right. So on the back side, it's written in Java, whereas our Oracle Forms right now are written in PLS GL. So Oracle Forms is going away, and now everything's going to be in the web browser. It's not going to really and you'll care what browser you use. Yeah, you can use Chrome to boost Firefox. Chrome, Firefox. Edge. Edge is a big one. Yeah. Edge is a great one. I like Edge. <laughs> It's an R &R. Yeah. Internet Explorer, if you are so this yeah, Internet Explorer is going to have less and less people recently around on this campus. Yeah. Yeah. Navigator. Navigator. Okay. That's Keith Navigator. Navigator. Is that what I just heard? Does that still exist? I don't think so. It belongs on the our last, board with, yeah, the, with the rotary phone. The last thing I was going to think came out like 20 years ago. <laughs> Uh, and there's a ton of work that we're doing on the back end. You're just never even going to see. You're not going to notice. If you, if you notice anything, it's just if the banners even zip here or anything else. Uh, Mark's doing a ton of work and has been for more than a year. Long time I can't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of that has to come with the fact that we're, we're, we're actually building an entirely new system from scratch and consists of seven different computers and servers. And mm -hmm. we're about well, out of the 88 steps, we're on step 51. So they were about two thirds of the way through it. Um, three, four of the machines are actually built and done and ready to go. Um, yeah, so if we're doing our job right, you won't notice a thing on all but, that work. Yeah, and we're doing that concurrently with standing up a test single sign on system, which mm -hmm. I was actually able to turn on just yesterday. Okay. Yeah. We're going to have to have a session on that. On single sign on, we'll have to teach about how that's going to change things. Does everybody know what single sign on means? Yeah. yeah. So you sign in once and then everything else just works. Yeah. It just, it's just switched to that, like my previous job. Mm -hmm. That was really nice. It was yeah. huge. We have a requirement on the banner end for single sign on, so it'll work within the banner world. Uh, at a minimum, but we'd love to start connecting up to Moodle or Gmail or other systems that we have on campus so that we have less and less credentials to keep track of. Yeah, I think as of uh, by April 2016, all new machines uh, were basically just a ghost. Everything was cloud based or server based. Yeah. So they were really just using a screen interface. Where was that at? At Larimer County in Colorado. Oh, yeah. It was. It was Virtualizing everything. Yeah, it felt a little weird, and of course, you know, for the new users, they were just they just went right 
do it. Mm -hmm. and go find the copy or whatever it was and just let it go. So young people who are doing that is, you know, technology-based education, they were just ready to go. It felt a little awkward for... I think that's going to be a common thread through this, that, that all of us have to go through the change, but new people come into our system, the training on Banish will be a lot less. You're not going to have to memorize what the SOFAR regs means. You're just going to know, I go to the registration screen and do <coughs> registration stuff. Uh, it's going to be a lot more intuitive. Other questions? Comments? All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll keep in touch over the summer. And uh, next fall comes, we'll start to see a lot of us. Not me, I don't work in the I'm not going to 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 I'm not